I got a little bit different title here, but it's understanding and modeling response curves. So really two primary objectives we're after today. <clears throat> we're going to define functional data, or I like to call it curve data. And then we're going to walk through the basics, um, the basic workflow of analyzing curved, curved responses. So let's start off by defining what do we mean by functional data in the title of functional data explorer really i think of it, it is just a curve so pick pick a y response here that unfolds over some domain x and some folks were listing those in the chat tighter over time spectral temperature profiles some other alias terms when i hear people speak i start thinking about curve data signal trend profile and spectra so at its heart, this is just what we mean, a Y response unfolding over an X domain. Some examples, some stuff up top here, probably you've seen in the uh, news, annual weather trends, or if you're buying or selling a, a, a house, housing price index. And then down on the bottom here, some more kind of classic technical stuff, stress versus strain, which actually we are gonna look at the first example here. And then we see a voltage decay, so a voltage level over time. Um, and of course, folks were already putting in some examples of what they use here. Here's my two minute um, brainstorm, it took me to start listing. And I think we heard folks talk about spectral, right? And somebody mentioned growth curves. If you wanna get business and financial, you can use FDE for that. And then here's some uh, environmental weather stuff. I've been tracking some particles these days in Colorado with all the wildfires and looking at some trends there over time. And of course, manufacturing production, I don't even know, we could list hundreds of um, probably curve responses that are out there. But just to get the brain thinking, you know, there's curve responses all around us. So what can you do with curvy data? <clears throat> and I just bucketed um, two primary buckets here on the left is just characterize and explore. So you may be just looking to search for commonalities, or maybe you're trying to find root cause and you're just looking at a good versus bad, trying to cluster bin and understand where the variation's coming from. And then on the right is focusing on what you could do with more model optimize and prediction. And of course, probably 90% of folks um, are getting into this analyze a DOE with a curved response that was on the survey. So we'll kind of look at some stuff here as well as just understanding variability of a curved response signal. All right, historical approach to analyzing curves. Karate chop, chop the curve up. Give me a thumbs up if you guys have chopped curves up in the past where you pick a peak and you pluck those off the curve or you look at a distance between there, oh, thumbs up all over the place. A slope, right? I spent way too much time doing this um, and it's very tedious. So even data cleaning, this platform is gonna bring along the ability to data clean and use all the data in the curve, right? And it's you as subject matter experts determine, do I, am I interested in the entire curve or not? So we don't want to throw that away and you avoid multicollinearity once you start to get in the regression analysis. Okay, basic workflow of analyzing responses in FDE, again, is the Functional Data Explorer. We're going to start with import and plot our curves. Visualization is always key. Probably always going to do that in Graph Builder. However, in the platform, you will also get kind of a stripped down version where it overlays the curves as well. So we always want to start there. And then we're going to move on to clean, smooth, and then a fit a functional model. So cleaning, what do we mean? Um, maybe you're only interested in a specific portion of the curve. So you can crop it on the x-axis. Maybe you have a spectral uh, analysis where you have drift in the sensor and you can baseline correct. So there's a lot of different tools you can do to clean it. And then we're going to fit a functional model, a spline. So really what we start with is individual points, right? In your, in your data. And then we're gonna fit a continuous function. 
So that's what we mean by fit a functional model. And then what we end up with, if you look down here, we have a mean function. That's this red that you can kind of see in here. So it's a mean function of all the curves. And then you have these shape functions over here. And you can have one, two, three, as many shape functions as you want. And the basic concept is if we wanted to recreate this curve, we would take the mean function plus or minus portions of these shape functions across the X domain to reconstruct that curve. That's kind of the essential um, workflow of what jump is doing behind the scenes. Then we end up in Analyze. If you wanted to go look at maybe um, FPCA scores and clustering, um, but most folks are gonna end up down here, which is the functional uh, design of experiments profiler, where our response in this case is just a curve like this. And then we have our X inputs. And of course we can scroll um, our inputs sliders and see how that changes. So for those of have have seen the profiler before, it's, we're gonna get there for a curve. Okay, that's kind of the basics um, of the background. Let's actually go look at our first case study and let me introduce, this is fresh, hot off the press. I just picked up this data set earlier this week and it is a case study looking at aluminum 6061 T65 anneal. Um, it's a stress strain characterization. So bear with me. I think I got something for us to look at. The researchers were at the Johns Hopkins uh, University. Um, and if folks are interested, I do have the publication link. But their objectives here, it's really in that, that variation. They were trying to study the material property variation. And they mentioned building a model, temperature dependent model for stress versus strain. And we're gonna do that in, in JUMP. And then these last two bullets are, again, more around understanding material properties, maybe revising build codes for aluminum structures um, or sharing this data with industry so industry can now explore um, other aluminum structures. So that's kind of the objective of this paper. Their test setup, <clears throat> and I live this with uh, polyethylene 25 years ago in grad school. They had two specimens, uniaxial and plain strain. And there's an environmental chamber with a camera that's actually a digital setup for measuring strain, but you could imagine attaching physical um, strain gauges as well. They're attaching temperature here. And kind of the, the takeaway for me of living this process, very time consuming to go through this setup to get samples machined run this test that takes six seconds. And then you're stripping it all back down and you move to that. So it's very time consuming. And if I had functional data explorer and knew anything about design of experiments 25 years ago, I would have done it much differently. Here's the test plan. And I'm looking at this, we have two, uh, I'm kind of looking at it as a DOE perspective first, even though this is not a formal um, structured designed experiment. There's two different specimen types. You'll see the skew across temperature, um, lot, which is manufacturer in this case. And then you'll see these zeros, ones, and threes. This was the team's assessment of, I'm gonna add repeats in here to understand some sort of variability in the process. So they did 154 tests. Um, and I think they did a really good job uh, as far as the science behind it, but more from a DOE perspective. This is looking very inefficient to me, so more on that in a minute. But where we're going to end up with their data is right here. FDOE profiler. We have our stress versus strain. We have our stress strain curve. So we could explore lot to lot or manufacture to manufacture variation. Or maybe we go over and look at the samples, how different are they? In the paper they mentioned they were investigating um, both of those. And of course, temperature, that's the, that's the money, money uh, X factor. Now from a designed experiment perspective, 
I just did a heat map of the Johns Hopkins team here with 154 runs. And you'll see anything that's white is kind of missing in the space. How I probably would have suggested is coming into Jump's custom designer and do 36 runs. And I bet you I could probably cover that space. And then again, you'll see bias. So you'll see more replicates up in this, in this zone versus down here. So they did mention some other constraints that could have been accounted for in a designed experiment approach. So key takeaway, if you're gonna get into this stuff, um, definitely consider design of experiments. Jump does that and you can specify a curved response. All right, let's get into the data. Data table, stress strain, file name is just the individual um, um, tensile runs. And of course we have our X's, our lot temp and test specimen. And I'm just gonna note, I have a validation column here. So the model's being built on training data. It's gonna get refined on validation. And then I did have a test set. So I, I held out a test set so we could test how well the model fits on data it hasn't seen before. 